Hi, I'm Danielle Hartman. Welcome to Port in PA, a series sharing the stories of Pennsylvania's craft beer industry. We have a jam-packed episode for you, so let's get right to it. A new year is right around the corner, and with it comes resolutions. For those that are looking to cut carbs and count calories, we've got you covered. Low-calorie beers don't have to be bland and boring. A number of Pennsylvania brewers are brewing beers that won't tip the scale. We caught up with a few of them to see what's behind the low-cal craze. We decided to go into the low calorie thing because like everyone, we're aging as well. Um, so calories weren't so much of an issue when we were younger. Um, they're becoming more of an issue with each passing year. Obviously, Victory has a reputation for hops, whole flowered hops. We loved the challenge of making a hoppy, full aromatic IPA, but bringing down the calories and the carbs so that you could enjoy more of the liquid. Easy Ringer really is an evolution of everything that we've learned in IPAs. Just basically dialed back through light beer brewing techniques in order to get it to the specifications we wanted it to be. It comes in at 96 calories and three carbs, and it utilizes whole flower hops. We've got Cascade, Citra, and Strata in there. The process was, again, trying to be true to our roots in terms of big flavors, but also big flavor that fits into a little box, let's say. With our whole flower hops and with our late hopping in our brew house here, we are able to get a whole lot of aroma to jump out at you. So we don't really need to convey a ton of bitterness and a ton of flavor after that. If we load it up front, you already have the impression and it carries through with the light body of the spear. The market for Easy Ringer IPA really is everybody. There is a moment where this is the right beer for you. Whether, I mean, if you drink Imperial Stouts regularly, there is going to be a hot, humid day where this is actually going to make you feel happier about your choice. Well, the trend towards more, being more healthy and having a more balanced lifestyle from every aspect, from food, locally sourced food, food that you know has been prepared well without using fake ingredients, all the way down to livestock that's, you know, cared for like a pet. You want to make sure that you have, you know, healthy choices. I've always wanted to experiment and try and make an IPA that had all the hop character of a full-blown uh, fire alcohol IPA and still not be watery, and that actually was the challenge. This one's 4%, 98 calories, technically tests around 97, but we list at 98 because there's a little fluctuation from batch to batch. That's about one gram of carbohydrates. The trick was making sure there was enough glycerol production and fermentation to make it not seem watery. So we do a co-fermentation with wine yeast and beer yeast together, and that got our glycerol where we need it to be from fermentation. It sold out faster than we could even turn it around to make the next batch. So we have another batch on the, on the uh, roster already, so we're gonna try and keep this going. We're keeping it pretty much being distributed out of here, specifically for now, and then once we figure out what our volumes are gonna be, we'll start selling it wholesale. But for now, it's only out of our tap rooms and direct shipping. Empty calories, it's our light American lager. Uh, right now we don't have exact calorie intake on it. It's range between mid to upper 90s right now. I mean, it's the times now where, you know, everyone's looking for a lighter beer. I mean, those heavy IPAs, brown ale, stout, stuff like that. This, it helps bring people in. You know, they're looking for a lighter option. Uh, a lot of athletes, you know, they don't want to get tons of calorie intake. So it's a nice beer to have. It's light, easy drinking beer. Technically on our label, it is a Pilsner. Uh, we just called it Amer American Light Lager. So it's just crisp. I mean, you think about a Michelob Ultra, it's kind of along the same lines, but with this, in my opinion, more flavor, tastes better. This is the second time we've canned this beer. We've had it on draft before, and we go through it fairly quickly. We always want to give back to the community that helped us become what we are now. Without the support in Crawford County when we were just a single pub, without them, we wouldn't be where we're at today. 
So we always want to give back to the community and help those who have helped us reach our goals. We're holding our Empty Calorie 5K. Uh, it's a partnership with ARC of Crawford County. That's an organization that helps adults with intellectual and mental disabilities to get into the workforce, you know, make sure they have a job and they're taken seriously. All the best things in the world are higher in calories <laughs> than their like lower calorie counterparts, right? It's just the way it is. So you do have to make some compromises, but how could we intelligently make those compromises while keeping you know, as much flavor as possible in there? When I started playing with a beer calorie calculator, um, which it's all based upon the residual sugar that's left in the beer, it kind of clicked with me that all these are our session brute IPAs. So if we can drive that residual sugar all the way down, we can hop the hell out of them and still start with like a beefier base beer. This one's 4.4%, where a lot of the other ones you'll see are four. Just promoting it as like, hey, this is something like after a run or after a workout, like this is a beer that you could drink and enjoy and it's not gonna be that many calories to completely combat what you just did. Um, since we first released it, so many people have been calling and asking like, oh, when are you gym selfie again? And it's something that the general public like really, like they just enjoy an IPA, maybe don't want the calories, especially during summer. And um, it's just, you know, people have been buying it like crazy. So like a 7% hazy IPA could come in at like 280 a can. A triple IPA, somewhere around 320. Um, we just released like a big Oreo pastry stout and that came in at 600 calories a can. <laughs> <laughs> that one did sell faster. <laughs> that one sold out in one minute. So maybe we're going about this the wrong way. We saw some of the other craft breweries around the nation doing these low calorie IPAs. You know, we thought it would be a perfect thing to do a lower calorie Dulacon because everyone that um, drinks Lavery knows Dulacon, everyone on Erie, uh, Pittsburgh. So to do Dooley Light kind of seemed like a um, no brainer for us. And, and we're, we were pretty hardcore anti seltzer. Yeah. I mean, you know, like we're a brewery, you know, we make beer. Seltzer seems like kind of a money grab almost. So we were very adamant uh, of making sure like everything we make would be very hoppy and, you know, beer based. We sampled a bunch of different locale beers. Yeah. Bell's was the most notable for sure. And then uh, trying to stay true to our roots and make a locale beer because, you know, uh, beer definitely does have calories, you know, and we drink a lot of beer every single day and uh, he's skinny, but you know, I'm not. So uh, it's nice to drink a beer that has a ton of flavor without, you know, have all those calories, so. We've also done a lot of variations of dual con. So we've done like double dual con, we've done- Son of dual con. Son of dual con, which was another like lower- Lower like ABV. ABV beer. Yeah. So we've done different variations of the actual flagship, so- Grapefruit dual con. It's like a whole family So of it really con. just added to the family of, of, of dual con. It was really fun to like play around because you know, brewing a low-cal IPA is not the same process, you know. So we do the same stuff pretty much every single day with like different variables about malt and hops and yeast and stuff like that. But brewing a low-cal IPA was, you know, like a fun exercise it's for us. It's different in a, in a way, in a How sense. How do you yeah. pack that much flavor into a 4.1% beer that has 95 calories per 12 ounce serving, you know? So, you know, for us as brewers, you know, hanging out every day, like how can we, how can we milk this and have fun with it? And I think we, freaking nailed it so <laughs> <laughs> we have 14 taps we try to keep a wide variety of options on our tap list and that's one of the reasons we did the low calorie IPA is because that was a hole that we didn't we didn't have like a hard seltzer that we had on tap and we know that that's a part of the market that we're missing so this low low calorie IPA the Dewey light just like filled that hole and so Definitely there's a group of drinkers that that's their go-to every time they come in. We usually never can or bottle a beer on this first like iteration. Um, so to, you know, we wanted to brew it on draft first just to see like, could we do it? Like how to taste, whatever, you know? So, um, and obviously draft sales have plummeted during COVID. So, uh, but I'd say we were going through at least a keg a week during COVID, which is yeah. great because that's almost all crowler and growler sales. So it's developed a very loyal following in the short time we've had it. Our experience is that the COVID-19 pandemic has thrown a monkey wrench in new products. Um, we've seen the consumer response has been to go to tried and true. And uh, so the consumer mindset over these last few months has been a little less experimental 
and I think that weighs on all new releases. But again, you know, paying attention to consumer responses and reactions on social media, very positive and very positive growth. So it's off to a good start. You know, I think there's an opportunity in low calorie beers. Obviously there is a health awareness that we see in all of our food products. Yet if you look at it macro from the beer perspective, uh, literally the world's largest brewers have infiltrated craft beer. Um, so if they take their eye off the ball of their domain, why don't we move into their domain? Every January, Pennsylvanians celebrate agriculture, food, and all things that make the Keystone State unique. The annual farm show takes place in Harrisburg with over 10,000 competitive events attracting over half a million visitors. No celebration of all things PA would be complete without beer. We made it to the last farm show to check out what was brewing. Today we're hosting the second annual Pennsylvania Beer Competition and we're at the Pennsylvania Farm Show Complex in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It's only the second contest of its kind and we've had more contestants this year than last and we just expect to see it grow year after year. We are judging the over 260 beers that have been entered this year into the Farm Show Competition. People are actually going to be able to sample Pennsylvania beers, which we think is a great way to get our product out to the half a million people that come to the Farm Show every year. We want to connect them with a local brewery in their neighborhood and get them to drink local and support a local business. Our competition is set up as objectively as possible, so we got 13 BJCP, which is Beer Judge Certification Program judges. These are highly trained, uh, highly experienced judges who know everything about the beer. They're in the other room. They don't see the beer other than what is uh, presented in front of them in cups. So it's a blind tasting, and they are judging the beer based on color, clarity, alcohol content, bitterness, making sure it's appropriate to style, they assign a point value to it and then pick first, second, and third in each category that we're doing. And ultimately, uh, best in show for a best overall beer submitted today. The judges are from a nationally accredited organization. They do a lot of contests with home brewers, so they've been, most of them have been sampling beer for numerous years, if not numerous decades. Um, so we have the best of the best. A lot are from Pennsylvania. If you have come in from, from out of state just because we wanted to get a large enough um, group of judges to get fair sampling. One of the categories in this contest is a PA preferred brew and what that means is that the contestants that are entering actually used a majority of Pennsylvania grown ingredients in their beers. So they will be judged apples to apples with other beers of the same category. The highest scoring PA preferred brew will then get the PA preferred legacy award that will be passed down from brewery to brewery year after year. Every time we spend our money directly to a farmer, we're enhancing their capacity to build a business, to improve our environment, and to um, build strong communities. As big as agriculture is to Pennsylvania, um, people, we want to let people know that beer is very big to Pennsylvania as well. So when we get a half a million people in to celebrate Pennsylvania agriculture, we want to show them our craft beer products. And most importantly, we want to connect them with a local brewery um, that they can hopefully do business with and sample their products in the future. I think the Pennsylvania Beer Contest will really showcase Pennsylvania beer. Um, we really want the first place and the grand prize winner to feel like they represent Pennsylvania. They represent the best of what we're doing here in the Commonwealth and um, that it really holds a high regard to really talented brewers, both well-established and small and burgeoning. For a small brewery, it gives you the ability to get a lot of uh, professional feedback on your beer. Also too, it gives you the ability to actually put your beer up against uh, some, some pretty major players. Um, you know, we have a lot of, lot of big um, and really good breweries in the state of Pennsylvania and sometimes the small breweries get a little bit lost in the shuffle, so it really gives them the ability to kind of be compared to the bigger breweries and judged and get feedback and and sometimes just because you're big doesn't mean you're brewing good beer or just because you're small brewing bad it's it, it's kind of evens the playing field and and gets everybody on the same page we hope this grows we'd love to be you know over 300 maybe for 2021 uh, we're very curious about how the sales are going to go where hopefully this can look as it to be an outlet for our craft brewers to get their product um, sold so that'll entice more people to, to enter their beer in the future 
I think going forward, man, if we could get even half of the breweries submitting six or seven different samples, I mean, we could have a really big high-end competition. Craft beer in PA is so fascinating to me. It's, um, it's grown exponentially so quickly. It is um, so diverse. I had the, uh, the option of pouring some beers today for the contest, and it was like a rainbow of beers, even within each category. Um, I think it really sheds a light on the passion that the people in our community have to be innovative and to be creative and to make things that people just love and what's better than beer. Beautiful. Now I can get back and drink. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the next farm show will be a virtual one. You'll be able to see who won the beer judging by visiting the farm show website. Look for the beer competition to be bigger and better than ever the following year. Now it's time to take a little trip. We visit a unique brewery that makes its home in a train car. Check it out. Jeff Rice, he owns the property. He was looking for a liquor license. I was brewing at another facility at the time and always wanted my own place and to be a little bit smaller um, than what I was. And I presented it, the idea to him and after some thought and stuff, he let me go ahead and build it. There's 17 pieces of train stock on the property. There's everything from the mini golf course to the ice cream shop. One of the train cars is model railroads. Uh, there's a bed and breakfast on site now. He has animatronic dinosaurs. <laughs> it's a little bit of a hodgepodge of everything. We kind of put the brewery up at the top of the property, surrounded the mini golf course, uh, put in the pizza shop, and kind of trying to tie it all together. The actual tap room is in a 1920s era baggage car. Inside of it, there's a lot of unique features. The bar is bowling alley from a local Eagles. We built, you know, everything. You know, the the foot rail is an old piece of mining rail that came off my parents' farm property. Same with the tin that's around the bar. A lot of the wood that's in there we actually repurposed when we gutted the train car. We built the stools by hand out of well casing and flanges. Slate chalkboards are original slate out of a local school. There's just a lot of unique features inside of it that are that are personable. I mean, you know, I built 90% of them and had a lot of involvement with what actually went into them. The wheel table is an interesting story. It was down in the depot, and really it was just annoying for them. They moved it from one corner to the other, and they didn't have any purpose for this wheel, and no one knew what it was. One day, I was walking through the space with Jeff, and I was talking to him about it. He's like, well, what, what are you gonna put back there? You don't have any tables, because we already had all the tables in. I go, well, I'm gonna take that wheel and make a table out of it. And he goes, really? And I was like, yeah. I was like, I need a base for it. Eventually, we found a uh, old coal stove out of one of these cabooses that was up on the hill so we had it sandblasted painted and built it as the base but the wheel is uh, it's the molding for the flywheel of a locomotive so it normally would have been destroyed um, because they would have poured the hot metal in and destroyed it um, but it's survived and we have it here another interesting thing is there's a jack from a Conestoga wagon in there. <laughs> One day I walked in and there, it was just sitting on the floor and I was like, what's this? He's like, can you use it? I bought it, you know, and it's it's got a, like 1823 date on it. Um, it. I guess they came with Conestoga wagons when you bought it, like a jack in your car. So there's all kinds of interesting things. One of the things we built this for is to allow homebrewers to come in and brew with us. So we do a lot of that. Um, probably a third of our batches end up that way where someone brings us a recipe, we scale it up to our system, they come in, hang out with us for the day, um, and then we get to put it on tap as a professional beer, you know, and get people outside of their friends coming over to experience that beer and get them some real feedback on it. Uh, it's been pretty well, it's been pretty successful. Um, we have probably about three that are continually asked for and on all the time um, and the other ones come and go we, we bring them back as we like. The beers I like personally to drink are big Russian Imperials, barley wines, barrel aged stuff. We have a 12% Russian Imperial stout that we do kind of as a pastry stout um, with coconut vanilla and this year we're putting chocolate in it. It comes in 12. I, I really like it. It's good beer. Um, it's called Pennsylvania Coal. There's 17 train cars currently, and 
Jeff also has dedicated one of the cars. It's called the Caring Caboose. It's available for children with special needs or people with special needs to come and have a dining out experience. It has sensory touch and feel things inside of it for doorways are a little bit wider. It's a private eating car for, for families that need that kind of service. We also have a pizza shop, Rail Car Pizza up here. It's a stone-fired oven pizza. It's really good. It's a single serving pizza. We also have animatronic dinosaurs, which is kind of a crazy concept. He's always thinking how to make the property more interesting and how to bring people into it. Kind of a, a nice location. If you're traveling on Interstate 80 East or West, get off exit 97, one mile south on 219. We've all enjoyed plenty of Pennsylvania's brews, but do you really know how they're made? Our next segment is a little different for us. Class is in session as we learn how beer is made courtesy of Pizza Boy Brewing in Enola. Here at Pizza Boy Brewing, we take great care to bring you the freshest and highest quality beer possible. Let's take a look at how your favorite brews are made. It all starts with a recipe and an idea. Our head brewer works on a plan for the beer and creates a grist bill. That grist bill and recipe dictates what grain or malt will be used. We first take the malt and mill it. This enables us to extract the fermentable sugars. Mmm, sugar! Once the malt has been milled, it takes a ride to our mash tun for a hot bath. Steamy! Here, we soak the milled grains in hot water in order to break the starches down into sugars. This leaves us with a mash. The mash then travels a short distance into our louter tun. Here, we extract a sweet liquid from the grain husks. This liquid is known as wort. No, not that kind of wort. The wort is then sent back for an even hotter bath. We boil this liquid for a period of time before we add other flavoring ingredients, like hops. After boiling, the wort is transferred to a whirlpool. It's here that we clean the liquid up and remove any particles. It's then cooled down and aerated. This liquid is finally ready to start fermenting and becoming beer, the elixir of life. As I'm sure you guessed, this liquid now takes another trip, this time into the fermenter. Yeast is added to eat the sugars and create alcohol. CO2 is also created and released. Once the beer has been fermented, it's off to rest in a bright tank, where it will be carbonated and mature. Our brewers then decide when the beer is ready for packaging. In order to get the finished beer into your hands, we then can or keg the beer in-house. Overall, the beer has only traveled 30 feet in this entire process. So now, when you're sipping your favorite Pizza Boy Suns, you'll know how that liquid magic made it into your glass. Enjoy! We'd like to take a moment and recognize the many breweries that are struggling during this pandemic. We've already seen a few close their doors. Sadly, there is little chance of some of these ever reopening. We encourage you to support your local breweries wherever you can. We also appreciate your support of this show. Your followings on Facebook, Instagram, and of course YouTube have meant the world to us. And if you haven't yet, click the subscribe button. You'll be the first to know about new episodes. Thanks for watching. Before we leave, let's visit La Cabra Brewing in Berwyn for our brewery spotlight. Until next time. Cheers. We're here in Berwyn, Pennsylvania at La Cabra Brewing. La Cabra Brewing started about three years ago, October of 2017. We were under construction for about a year and a half and finally got our doors open, been brewing and serving great food ever since. Our biggest focus on our beer portfolio is mostly to have an option for everyone that walks through the door. We're really wanting to be approachable to all walks of life, everyone from the beer nerd, you know, drinking barley wines and, and fierce sours down to my mom who do you have something like a blue moon? You know, we, we, we're happy to serve uh, everyone that comes to join us and making sure that everyone's comfortable within our doors is really our primary focus. Stylistically, we're all over the map. The hazy IPA can't be ignored, so we brew a handful of those. Our sour program is really something special. We put a lot of hard work into it. 
It's very quiet, you don't see a ton of it. When it does pop up, it's really something special. Other than that, we were really focused also on Pilsner, real strong German background as far as uh, Kolsch and Pilsner. We take pride in those beers, it's what we drink. Most brewers would agree that a Pils, clean, crisp Pils is what you might reach for at the end of a brew day. So that's something that we really enjoy making and, and sharing with our customers as well. Hipster Catnips are a flagship American IPA. It's a classic American citron mosaic. You really can't go wrong with those two flavors and took off like crazy. And it kind of, when people asked us what's gonna be your flagship or what's gonna be your focus, we often said, you tell us, we don't know. It's not up to us what, what you like. So we let the consumer decide and they wholeheartedly, resoundingly endorsed hipster catnip <laughs> um, so right now we can't keep it in tank it just flies off the shelf yeah food could easily be pointed to as one of the biggest differentiators for us getting off the ground there's a dozen different ways to open a brewery and and what works for one might not work for another but for us it was critical that food be a part of it beer and food deserve each other they go together and where we are geographically and as a brand, we um, believe strongly that a food truck or um, some snacks on a table don't cut it. Um, so we took a very, very serious approach to our menu upon opening and then to growing that, pro that program over time. That is a direct uh, result of why Bodega is, is around it all. We outgrew the concept that we built here and wanted to do more, so much so that we got another location and bought a giant smoker and pizza oven and everything that goes together with it. So food, beer, and service together are what we use to help differentiate ourselves from maybe some of the other um, brands out in the world. We really take all of those things seriously. If you succeed in all three, you're doing great. If you fail in any one, that's a no-go for us. So that's been our mantra, so to speak, kind of from the beginning. Community is always key, and it's really a thing that uh, we're really proud to be a part of within the brewing community, but also within our, our, our town of Berwyn. Uh, I grew up here, I went to the local high school and middle school, so being back in the area that I was raised in made it easy to connect with community members and, and different versions of outreach that we can um, you know, help out with. Everything from t-ball jerseys, even though it's a little sensitive to put a, <laughs> a brewery's name on a t-ball jersey, we found a way around that. and. Uh, um, but, you know, supporting the local fire department. Recently, we had a, a, one of our Shatter series as a benefit for frontline workers. So our mission is to give back to the community that supports us. And we're really blessed and have a great experience with both Berwyn as a town, but um, kind of the mainline area as a whole has been very supportive to the brand. The atmosphere of La Cabra is fairly unique. Uh, the building is from the late 1800s. It was one of the original general stores in the town of what was Reeseville at the time. It's now Berwyn. It's very disarming, it's very cozy. People pay great amounts to replicate industrial chic or whatever you want to call it, but that's basically what this building was by default. Really quirky building, but a lot of really interesting visual cues. So the space itself has its own narrative and is a character all its own. Beyond that, it's really our staff that's the core of, of the the ambiance, so to speak, where there's no pretense, there's no judgment of if you don't like beer at all, that's cool too. We have cider, we have wine, we have non-alcoholic. We nobody's here to, to prejudge you or you know pass along an opinion of whether or not you're beer nerdy enough for us to hang out with you. That's not how it works. So the team is really uh, tight knit and works really well together, and it's become uh, a really fun environment that exudes into the customer experience. You can feel it when you come in. And people have said that to us many times, like I just feel at home and that's a win for us because that's how we want everyone to feel when they enter our building. Folks can find our beer throughout mostly the greater Philadelphia area, but we also have uh, distribution throughout the north and west uh, counties. The best thing to do is check out a, a map on our website that shows uh, different accounts that have received our beer recently. And primarily it'll be canned product, but we are looking at draft uh, on select accounts as well. And we'd love for everyone to go out and support their local distributor or wholesaler, whoever it is that they can, you know, purchase from because we're all we're all a network and we're all in it together. So we support them in everything that we do and and they're great to support us. So La Cabra the goat, our spirit animal, they're intelligent, they're hard headed, they're they're playful. There's a lot of the qualities you look for in, in beer, right? You beer is supposed to be fun. It's a it's a creative outlet. Uh, one of the competitive advantages for beers is not too serious. It's not wine, it's not liquor. It's supposed to be fun. So we try to keep that in our minds at all times, make it taste good, but also don't forget to enjoy yourself and, and have fun as well.